Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this rainy Sunday morning. It's good to see all of you. Starting the week off right and praising the Lord. A couple announcements as we begin today. Um, continuing with COVID restrictions, as comfortable as you can be wearing your mask today, uh, we ask that you wear it during the service and especially during singing. If you forgot your mask, just sing in your heart then. You don't sing out because they say, you know, singing is the thing. So just follow me if you, uh, if you have any questions about when especially we should be wearing them. Um, a couple other things. Um, so you might just notice the uh, offering box on your way in today. Uh, we're collecting an offering for UNICEF, and I was just informed we'll also be accepting that next week. So if you got here and were surprised to see the offering box, we'll put it out again next week. Um, today would normally be a communion Sunday because it's the first Sunday in October, but um, because of our change in venue and how tight it is in here, we decided to not have communion this month, and we will resume in November when we will be back in the Performing Arts Center. So November 6th will be our next communion and we will be back in the Performing Arts Center by then. Um, you have two opportunities for Bible study this week. Tuesday morning in the living room, that's a change in menu, in the living room, with me, 10.30 if you'd like to have a Bible study. There's also Horizons Bible study with Pastor Brian Ballard on Wednesday in this room in, at 10 o'clock. So two opportunities this week. All right, a thought as we begin this morning. Do you remember one of your first jobs that you had? Uh, for me, it was, I worked at Clover. Do you remember Clover? Oh, I love Clover. I got a discount. And um, you think about uh, your jobs that you had and there were the things that you loved, right? And the things that were challenging. So I think of that early job, and I loved the discount. I loved the money. I loved working with other teenagers. We were all running the registers. Uh, the parts I didn't like, hmm, coming into work when I was tired, right? Or when they had a big sale on toilet paper and you had to like scan 25, 30 rolls of toilet paper. That was not a fun week. Um, Every one of our jobs, right, has had things that we love and things that we don't love. As we come to today's gospel reading, Jesus is going to compare our life of faith to a job. And there's going to be things that are going to be easy for us, and there's going to be things that are going to be hard for us. As we think about that metaphor, right, the things we love, eternal life, hope, answers to prayer, the things that are hard, forgiving people, <laughs> growing, changing, but it's one complete entity. Listen for that as we come to the scriptures today. Our call to worship comes from Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, the author of this, the human author, is a Jeremiah, who we have been spending a lot of time with over the last few months. Um, so this is some of his message of hope. I'll read the regular print. Join me on the bold print. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Our first hymn this morning is May Jesus Christ Be Praised. <laughs>
that his mercies are new every morning. He invites us to forgiveness, new life, and new chances. Will you pray with me our prayer of confession? It's found on the screen or on your paper. And afterwards, we'll have silent prayer. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. God, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. together our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we have come together today hungry to hear your word. Your word of hope and faith and peace. Unclog our ears. Open our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit so that we might hear with joy what you would say to us today. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. And I hear the giggles. I love him, too. <laughs> the apostles said to the Lord, to increase our faith. He replied, 
If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing and looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down and eat? Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. So today's message is entitled, What if you already have the faith that you need? Do you know those places down on the boardwalk by the shore where you have those arcades where you can play the different games and get the tickets? You know, I know my family likes the, what's the game with the ball. The, the ski ball. We love that thing. Like, it spits out all the tickets. Or sometimes you play the other one where you roll it and the horses run. You know, I mean, it gives you tickets if you win. And, um, at least my family, when we would spend our week down the shore, we would save up all our tickets and then the last day we would go to the counter and you'd, you'd hand them in and we always had to stay within like the first counter, right? Which was candy and little plastic toys. But, you know, I knew families who would save up all summer long. Do you know those families? And they would get the TV at the end of the summer or the air fryer or one of the big <laughs> prizes that they had up on, up on display. Um, and I was thinking about it because sometimes we treat faith that way. Like it's points that we accumulate, right? We say, well, people with a little faith put five dollars in the offering. But you know, if God gave them a lot of faith, then they start to tithe. Right? We, we've thought like that, right? Or um, people with a little bit of faith, well, if their spouse or their kids hurt them, they can forgive them because they've got a little faith. But not their neighbor and definitely not their enemy because you've got to save up points to be able to do that. It takes some kind of crazy amount of faith to be able to do that. But today's scripture tells us that that's not really how faith works. You can't like store it up and then cash it in for a big activity of faith. But instead, faith is in the person of Christ, helping you to trust to do the very next thing that God is calling you to do. And that next thing might be tiny, or that next thing might be big. But the faith is the same. Now, we started today's reading, you may have noticed, Luke 17, verse 5. Let me tell you what verses 1 to 4 said. Verses 1 to 4, Jesus is giving them some instructions. He says this, don't cause other people to sin, especially young ones or ones who are young in the faith. He also says, Keep watch over your brother so they don't, he doesn't stray away from the faith. And then he says, and if your brother sins against you seven times in one day, forgive him every time. So you know why the disciples said, increase our faith. Because they heard those instructions and they said, well, I've only got five points of faith. I don't have 100,000 points to cash in to do these big things because seven times in one day makes us really tired 
if we have to forgive someone else. We want them to get it through their thick head to stop doing that, right? We don't want to have to change our heart. So when we hear these impossible things, we, like the apostles, might say, increase our faith. We don't know if we can do these things. But this is what Jesus says to us. The first thing he says is he starts talking about the mustard seed. Now, we've heard about the mustard seed before, right? It's the tiniest little seed, the smallest little speck. And what does he say? If you have faith as small as this mustard seed, you could say to, and I'm thinking he's looking around, and there's a picture on your bulletin there of a mulberry tree. You could say to that mulberry tree, get up and go and be planted in the sea, and it will do it. So, what he's talking about is impossible things, right? He's using an example because trees do not get up and move into the sea. And people do not automatically forgive. It is not in our nature, is it? It is not in our nature to look out for people beyond our little circle. It is not in our nature to keep forgiving. So he's making these two impossible things equal. That if you have a little faith, you could move the tree. But who wants to move a tree? Nobody wants to move a tree. What he's talking about is who can forgive? Who can live out Jesus's instructions to us? And he's saying, if you have a little bit of faith, and I was thinking mustard seed, or I was even thinking, you know, a little tiny spark of faith. We sometimes have sung that song, this little light of mine, right? Thinking about that we have a little tiny bit of light that sometimes we, we, we've had those moments where we have felt there's something to this faith where we've been sure of it. And he says, that's the little spark. Those moments where you said, yeah, this is the truth. This is what is good. Um, so he's saying that little faith is enough for the impossible things I'm asking you to do. All right, you want to hear another story? When I was a girl, they put in a mini market around the corner from my house. And the kids in the neighborhood were thrilled because they had a ice cream machine, like a soft serve machine. And, um, you could serve yourself, and every ice cream cone was one dollar. Didn't matter how big it was. <clears throat> so, you can imagine what me and my friends did. <laughs> we went to that ice cream machine, and we made, <laughs> I have to tell you, these ice cream cones were probably like this big. You know, we, we were, you know, too bad it was ice cream and it melted so fast. You know, but we, we were like, we are going to get the biggest thing. Because, you know what? Having no limits was a concept that a kid doesn't have, right? That was like the first time I had an idea of what just being able to go get what you want was introduced. Like you, you can have as much as you want for that 99 cents. Um, all right, where am I going with the, with the, um, with the ice cream cone? Jesus is saying he's not putting a limit on it. He's saying, you come to me, I give you what you need. Keep following me. If you need a little bit of ice cream today, it's yours. If you need a giant pile of ice cream to get through, I'm going to give it to you. Because you know what? He gives good gifts. He shows us mercy and love. And he's not asking us to live out of life that he hasn't shown us what it looks like. Think about it, right? He showed us what it looks like to forgive. He shows us what it looks like to look out for one another. And he's saying, this is what life looks like. You know, there's something to what faith is, right? That the things that God asks of us, forgiveness, looking, looking out for others, um, these are the things 
means that Jesus went to the cross to show us were the most important things in the life of faith. And you know what? We're invited to them not because they're in our nature, because they're impossible things. They're not just for people who have it all figured out. They're for people like you and me, who are invited to know that this is the kind of life God wants for us. Now let's think about the mulberry tree for a minute, right? If we were to follow Jesus' example, the mulberry tree moves after the person said, get up and be moved into the sea. It didn't get up and move into the sea before that, right, in the example. It, gets, it, it moves when the person says to do it. So I wonder if forgiving and looking out for one another doesn't work the same way. That we speak that forgiveness even when we don't feel it. And we wait for the impossible to happen. We start looking out for the weak by, for example, giving your offering to UNICEF or knocking on the door of your neighbor and checking on them. And you wait for God to give you the energy to follow through or the, the finances you need to keep giving. It starts with the speaking and the doing and then the impossible happens. So we don't see the results first and then go walk that way. We do the thing that we're asked to do, and then the impossible begins to happen inside of us. So, in Jesus' example, after time number four, when your friend has sinned against you, he's saying, you say to them, I forgive you. Even though you're like, I'm really bad. <laughs> but you tell the Lord that. I choose to forgive, but I'm really mad. Make the impossible happen in me. You know, Jesus tells another story next, right? And it's the story of the servant. So let me recap that story. He says, if you had a servant in your house uh, and also in your field, if he went and did his field work and then came in, you would also expect him to cook dinner. And you wouldn't, like, thank him and say, sit down, let me make you dinner. Because, you know, a servant's job is to take care of the person who has hired them. All right. Let's think about what this parable is telling us. It's telling us that what we expect is important. What we expect in our jobs is important. So if this story was told about a fourth grade teacher, let's think about what it would say. It would say, all right, if you say you had a four, say you were a fourth grade teacher, then if you went to work and you had to deal with teaching kids reading, doing recess duty, and then um, taking all this work home and having to grade it and do your lesson plans at night, you're not going to expect that you are going to get extra pay or extra thanks because you prepared tomorrow's lessons, are you? You're not, because you're going to say, well, that was part of the job I took. Being a fourth grade teacher means doing these things. So how does it relate to what he's saying? He's saying there will be times when we think living this life that Christ called us to, one of love and forgiveness, feels like it's beyond the job description. Feels like God is asking us too much. Sometimes when God is the boss of you, you wonder, doesn't God have ridiculous expectations? How does God expect me to keep loving these people and forgiving these people? And he says, this is part and parcel of what it means to serve God. That when we sign on to believe and have that hope and have that love, we are signing up to have that happen within us. To be able to have forgiveness and love. And God is not shortchanging you. He is saying, this is what the good life is. And I'm going to give you what you need to do it. Faith is doing what needs doing next. 
by the strength that God provides. And you know what? We sometimes think that the Bible is so very complicated, but this is a really simple message, isn't it? Love God, love others by the power that God provides. Trust him to do the next and it doesn't mean that God doesn't serve us, right? Because we know the story of Jesus Christ. That he, you know, at the night before he was betrayed, the night he was betrayed, washed the feet, and he went to the cross, and he showed us that he does serve us. But he's telling us to adjust our expectations. So, let us think about this parable a little bit. It's telling us to use our faith. Have you ever heard the term, use it or lose it? People say that all the time, right? Use it or lose it. So like when it comes to our bodies, if we choose to sit in a chair 24 hours a day, never move, we're going to lose the ability to move as much, aren't we? You got to you gotta do your therapy. You got you to gotta, you gotta stretch if you want your body to stay healthy and strong. And practicing our faith is similar too. Use it or lose it. Practice what you have today. Forgiving, loving, looking out for the weak, even though it's impossible and I don't feel like it. We say, God, you will give me what I need to make the next right step. Because our Lord, the boss of us, is good and knows what leads to good life. And it is these loving, forgiving actions. What if you already have all the faith that you need? Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. All right, I lost my, my paper. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so we're going to sing a hymn. Oh, this is an oldie, but I think you might know it. Um, I'll go with him all the way.
with the congregation. Suzanne shared uh, with me about Glenn, who will pray for him. Um, what other prayer needs do you have today? Yes, for Nancy. Uh, Elizabeth. Or Amy. Amy, yes. Nancy. Oh, Mildred, yeah, let's pray for Mildred. Okay. All right, shall we go to the Lord together in prayer? Gracious God, we thank you for the spark of faith, for the little mustard seed that may have been planted in us years ago. And we thank you that your word tells us it's enough. We don't have to be giants. We thank you for this gift of faith that sees beyond this present moment and looks to eternity. We thank you that you give the gift of faith to all who simply ask for it. So we come asking, renew our faith. Help us to do all the things that you are asking of us, loving other people, forgiving them, looking out Lord, we ask that you would give us vision to see the world as you see it, and the people within it, with hope, with love. Lord, give us the same kind of foolishness you have to believe that we can change, to believe that others can change, to believe that good does win in this world. Lord, we pray for the situations that are on our minds. We pray for the war in Ukraine, and we continue to pray that there might be peace and justice. We pray for our country and the divisions within it, that you would help us, that you would get help our leaders, lead us to unity. We pray for these precious ones that have been mentioned. We pray for healing and help for Glenn and Nancy and Amy and Amy and Jason. Tracy. We continue to think about those who have lost so much in Florida. Give them strength and hope and send your people to help. We pray for Catherine's family, that you would comfort them. We pray for healing for Mildred. And we give to you, Lord, all the burdens we came to this place bearing. We ask for your help, your guidance, and your strength. And we pray together as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.